Initially, I was planning on doing a Krabby Pasta Friday today, but instead I'm going to change that to tomorrow because I found a hidden gem that may be a really, really good uh, story with a few cliches, but I didn't really notice that at the time. So today I want to present to you a first time creepy pasta author, which to be honest is probably one of the best I've ever seen. This is Run Escape. I hope you enjoy. Beta Testing A while back ago in the early 2000s, I really got into computers. Video games in particular. At this point in time, games were always coming up and needed beta testing, especially multiplayer games was looking to get started. I managed to get into a few closed beta sessions for one game in particular. It was called Run Escape. Run Escape started you off on an island where, well, you created your character and just got a feel for the game. At the character customization screen, a character came up that would be changed by the character customization tools. However, none of the customization tools worked. I assume this was, well, just a default character model everyone in the closed beta had to use, and didn't think much of it. I was humored by the fact that the character looked oddly like myself in real life. I, I ran through the island doing a few meaningless tasks and got an okay understanding of the game. Once I got off the island, I was sent to the main town and encountered a few other beta testers. These beta testers looked different from mine. I must have encountered a bug or something. The game did not have an objective. Similar to Minecraft, it was just a sandbox style game where you could do whatever you want by training skills. The game during the beta only had a few skills that one could train. Swordsmanship, blacksmithing, and agility. Considering the name of the game, I assumed agility was a skill that the dev people wanted us to well, focus on the most. I spent hours upon hours leveling up my agility skill. So long sometimes, I started in the morning and when I went to go take a break, it was at 8 at night. Before I knew it, I was addicted to this game. I made friends with a few others playing the game at the time who were also trying to level up their agility as fast as possible. We became good friends. Hours upon hours of running around, jumping up walls, walking across buildings, just to level up our agility skills seemed to fly by even faster with some friends. The game was about to go into open beta. I figured that the closed beta testers would be getting really excited for open beta, but the servers for Run Escape were empty aside from, at the time, what seemed like me, myself, and my leveling up agility friends. The open beta date was announced. And we were close to we were close to what I thought was maxing out our agility skills. We pulled an all-nighter and well did it. We maxed out our agility skill. Once we did, we were congratulated with a message that popped up on screen. Congratulations! You have reached max level in agility skill. You are now ready to run from the future. A bit of an odd message, but considering agility consisted of running away and jumping up things, it made sense. <sighs> With a job well done, everyone said goodnight and logged off. The following morning, I logged into what was now the open beta, but instead of logging back on where I finished last night, my character was standing naked in what seemed to be a cave. The cave was dark. I turned the game's brightness up to full, but it did not help at all. I could hear heavy panting and dripping sounds from my speakers. I typed in chat, hello? I sat in front of the keyboard and saw a message come up. It was one of my friends who was also naked. We could just see each other. We figured this was some sort of content update that was putting us here, possibly related to the game going into open beta. We explored what we could of this dark cave until we found a torch. We lit the torch and the cave around us was illuminated. The heavy panting was still unknown, but the source of the dripping sound was revealed. At the ceiling of the cave were... The ceiling of the cave were bodies of my other friend's avatars nailed to the cold, hard rock. A shiver of fear went down my spine and... I, I typed to my friend. It and I asked if she knew what was going on. I looked at my friend's box and I saw that the friends who were 
on the ceiling were removed. The only friend that was online was the friend that was standing with me in this cave as of this moment. We spent an hour or so trying to figure out how to get out of this damn cave. And why our friend's avatars were just suddenly dead and hanging from the ceiling. Heads facing backwards instead of forwards, their eyes were hollowed out and... That damn panting sound coming from the speakers. We were both impressed with the game and equally disturbed. We decided to explore the cave some more and found the secret wall. The wall open from the other side was what looked like an agility room. On the other side, we could see what looked like an exit. Many obstacles laid between us and the exit of this dark void beneath us. But, well, we decided to go anyway. We assumed that if you fell, you died game over. My friend tried the first obstacle, which was a set of jumping pillars, jumping from one pillar to the next. It seemed easy, of course, like, you know, the ones in Halo. And I decided to let her go through to see what exactly was... entailed for my future. As she went further and further into the course, the panting from the speakers got louder and heavier to see... <gasps> She came to the last obstacle before the exit, when the panting was now so loud it sounded like a near shriek. And now? A loud voice just boomed through the freaking speakers. Red eyes from the void below penetrated the darkness and a massive hand reached out and grabbed my friend's character. I, I did not know if I should have felt scared or impressed that the models were surprisingly lifelike. Like, not some sort of indie game, but something that would come out of a next generation system. Better than any game I've ever seen at the time. I figured my friend respond in the cave room, and, well, we started in our lives, distracted, back to the main town. Everyone, everyone responds upon death. I, I ran to the main cave room. The dripping sound was no longer heard. She was not there. I checked my friend box, and she was no longer in it. I looked up at the ceiling floor, and I found her also nailed to the ceiling of the cave, her head facing the opposite direction, and her eyes hollowed out just like the rest. I was legitimately disturbed and scared. I became very disturbed, and I was going to just log out and email the game developers about the content that was in this update. However, I just... I, I couldn't log out. Every time you press the log out, a screen message popped up. You must escape. Um, uh, I'm getting nervous, I'm sorry. This must have been the end of the event for the agility, and... It was an all-or-nothing agility course. The obstacles themselves were easy enough, but the real challenge was to lie ahead, avoiding that giant dark hand at the end. I went back into the secret room and just observed the course, see if any changes had happened, or if the red eyes appeared in certain places at certain times. Eventually, I figured a puzzle out. The red eyes appeared at every obstacle, except at certain times they would be closed or open. The key was to run across the obstacles while the eyes were closed. Simple enough puzzle, right? I began jumping pillar to pillar, and I felt a weird sensation as my character jumped from each pillar. My feet could... My actual feet felt cold and a weird pulsating feeling with each jump. The next obstacle was a set of monkey bars, and I almost, feel, I almost could feel as if the wood from the monkey bars were in between my hands as I went across. The same sensations came about until the very last obstacle where my friend, well... Failed. The last obstacle was simply walking across a plank, and I began rocking across it, feeling the wood beneath my feet in real life just as I was in the game. Just as I'm about to make it across, the red eyes opened from the void, a shriek penetrated my eardrums as if the monster was right next to me, screaming this blood-boiling scream. A giant hand reached up from upon the void and scratched my character's back. I dived to avoid the hand. As I did, I, I felt a white... It's, it's crazy as this seems, a white hot pain on my back, as well as... <sighs> but I dismissed it quickly as adrenaline from beating the endgame. Of course, it did not take away the pain. I exited the cave, and then a white screen occupied, occupied my computer screen for a couple of moments. I became horrified in what I saw next. First, there was a picture of me as a child and my father... My father pulled out my toes, and one was me in my teenage years smiling at a camera getting ready for a damn football game with a few of my friends. Then a picture of me sitting at my computer playing the game which I was playing at this very moment with my back to the camera. How did this game manage to get these pictures of me? I... I fucking panicking! 
Then all the all three messages came on screen, but they were all different. In all the pictures, my eyes were blacked out. The first picture was no longer me laughing. My face was in pain and my father's hand was missing from the picture. The second picture was... Was... I, I'm still not smiling and my friends were missing from the photos and... The last one may have been the most disturbing. My, my neck was bent at around 180 degrees. My face now looking at the camera screen, which was... Wielding an incredibly large smile upon my face. The images, they, they, they vanished and I logged out of the game and I looked back at the login screen. The login screen was now different. Instead of a plain screen of username and a password request, it was now a long hallway covering what lies at the end. Two torches with multicolored flames on each side of the screen. The title of the game, Run Escaped. Now, well, they changed. The E in escape now became lowercase and drifted towards the left. The S now became capitalized. The title was now... RUNESCAPE. The police report. Victim, Joshua Harding. Cause of death. Homicide. Time of death. March 16, 2004, approximately around 11.59 p.m. Details. Victim was found dead in his chair when his roommate came home from his classes. The roommate contacted 911 soon after discovering the victim's body. Autopsy report. Victim was killed by snapping of the neck. The neck was broken so severe that the head faced 180 degrees in the opposite direction. The eyes were gouged out of the victim's sockets. On the victim's chest was a carving, most likely from a crude knife. The carving said, do not run. The victim also had a carving on the back, no doubt from the same crude knife. The carving said, no escape. Three large scratches also ran down the victim's back. Notes. This is the fifth victim found with these carvings, a neck broken such as this and eyes carved out of their sockets. However, this victim, unlike the others, did not have carvings on his body. No link can be found with these victims aside from how they were killed. See reports 192, A, B, C, and D. Now, for those of you who are new to my show, I tend to do critiques at the end of creepypastas. If you're not interested in hearing this, simply click on another video and, you know, do that. For those of you who are interested in hearing my opinion on how they can improve their writing or generally make a good story, I'm going to tell you my opinion. Let's get started. Okay, this story is called Run Escape. Now, be honest, I really like this idea where the guy is basically talking about an early access closed beta game where he's simply testing it and creepy shit happens. I also like it being entirely, well, the actions within the game entirely based on his actual abilities with, you know, platforming. It's really nice. There's no power fantasy within this game. It's just, you know, him playing a game, him having an all-nighter of his friends, good build-up, as well as some creepy stuff happening in between. That's how you do build-up. You get us to get to know the character. We all have been there before where we've played up all night and we've enjoyed and explored a game and just grinded those levels to get them up and up just to see what it would be like at the end game. And this, guy, this game kind of reminds me of something like, hmm, you know, uh, maybe Dead Island, Mirror's Edge, something like that. But... All in all, the only thing I really say he could improve on is maybe talking more about the game, what it would be like, some general detail, as well as some more information. Maybe if I played RuneScape, I would understand where he was coming from, but honestly, I just wish there was more detail because damn, this guy can write. If you'll actually notice a picture, which I'm going to put a picture right here where it's basically showing some of the writing, this is how the writing should be done. You may notice that it is kind of cut off at the paragraph points. <sighs> Every narrator's came across this, it's something called the text wall. A text wall is basically a giant wall of text that isn't chopped up, so it kind of looks like a big damn scary thing that basically makes you want to shit yourself. But this story doesn't do that. It cuts them up, the writing's good, I like it, and there is just some generally creepy stuff in here, and I give it 10 out of 10 stars 
Good job, sir. The only credit I can honestly give is Derns. If you enjoyed that creepypasta and enjoy my content in general, and if you also happen to be an artist, a digital artist preferred, if you draw fan art for my character, as I'll have on the screen right now, you have a chance of being featured. Whether that be your DeviantArt, Tumblr, commission page, whatever, it will be featured on my channel. I also plan on starting another little show on my channel called Commission That, where I basically take a look at those who commission artwork, anonymously buy their artwork, and basically give a rating on the commission, judging by the time it took, quality of the artwork, as well as price. Taking all that into information, I think that I should be able to give good reviews to help people who are interested in buying art, whether that be for YouTube, some fandom of original character, for a story, or anything like that to help find good quality art for the price that they want. This has been your host, That Creepy Reading, who is selling t-shirts. Take a look in the description below, and I'm signing off. Have a good one.